Right, it's through Benson's Lock now. We passed the place we were moored for ages and we did paint the roof and everything uh, back at uh, the Shingflow Town. Um, yeah, through Benson's Lock, but there's a bit of a queue. Just everyone and their mother showed up. Loads of narrow boats, loads of cruisers, and we had to wait for the lock. And uh, we, I've never been in a lock with so many boats in Olive. Literally two so other every boats. Every now, there's going to be a queue. Yeah, it's going to get very busy from here on out. There's a big cruiser behind us. And there's this holiday boat in front of us who, I don't know, I think we might have a take because they're going a bit slow. Are we overtaking? I don't know. Huh? I guess so. How far is it to the next lock? Um, I'm at Max. I can't even say I'm at Max. Mm. Ages. Cleave lock. This is two foot three. And so Goring. Just fall in behind them then. What's what I do? Well, it looks like you're overtaken now, doesn't it? We're going at full power guys and the Gin Palace easily overtakes us. And this is where we moored in February 2021 and we got told off by the council because you have to have a winter mooring there but in the summer you pay £10 a night.
think this might be the only hose pipe water point we passed today at a 30 odd miles. Time we came up on the red boards, um, and he didn't take it kindly. I recorded it, but I end up de deleting the footage because <laughs> at that point I was a bit scared of what people thought, and I thought they were going to be against us. I thought they were going to side with them, but I don't think you guys would have. Yes, we were doing it on the red boards, and the, the strength of the water pushed us into his boat. And he came screaming out, got his camera, started recording us. Mum started crying. Um, the trouble is, where his boat is, it obscures was. the lock. Where it was. I thought it was gone, but it's just yeah, down here. It obscures the lock by about six or seven feet, mm. so it's a tight fit through there. And then on the other side, we got this work boat. Yeah. So it was a bit of a nightmare. The lockkeeper said, well, it is on, it is, it is, it is on red. And the next, next day, day it went, day yellow. went on yellow. <laughs> That's our luck. That is our luck. You and your just our luck. Well, we need to know. Well, that is just, yeah. yeah. That was a John Deere uh, mower thing, tractor yeah. thing. So, still there, but I think he's probably forgotten about us now. Anyway, yeah, we came through. We'll see a lot more of that on the uh, A&A, won't we? We came through uh, Cleve Lock. We're gonna get water there, but someone was on the water point. So we came through that. And um, then we came through Goring Lock as well. And Goring uh, is where George Michael used to live. And he died there. I think he died in the house. You can literally see it from the river. That's where he used to live. No, well, you get the odd lock, nice lock keeper, but a lot of them they just don't want to speak to anybody, especially on a narrow boat, yeah. I don't know what it is. He, s he spoke to everybody else, mm. he spoke to the yoga, um, the GRP like, cruiser in front, he spoke to the guy behind, but when it comes to narrow boats, a lot of them are really funny, and maybe they think that narrow boats should just stay on canals, I don't yeah. know. I just feel a bit uncomfortable going through locks. Mm. We are not too far from Reading now, we've got another hours? No. Another, I don't know, 10, 12 miles. And George, you remember that, Josh? The glass is still smashed on it. Yeah, we've got three more locks left, I think. Uh, three, two, one. Dusty bin, dusty bin. One, two, three, yeah. That's three locks on the River Thames. There's going to be more on the K&A. I'm going to be exhausted.
No, that is not the Dutch barge. I always get it confused with that one. Um, but we do see it a bit later on. Also, there is free mooring down here as well. This was very frustrating as you can see they're shutting the lock on us and we could fit in because we've just been in a lock with that GLP cruiser. But he doesn't bother saying, he doesn't care. <laughs> We're trying to save water aren't we on the Thames? They don't even ask me if I can shut the gates for them and drop the paddles, they just assume I'm going to do it.
This is Pangbom and it's free mooring all the way along here but it's usually packed to the brim. And it is. There's one space in front of this Dutch barge, which is actually the one we crashed into here. And I don't think he likes the fact that this holiday boat is trying to get in front of him. He's a... Uh... Good as lilies, that was. Through um, Light Church Lock, Maple Durham Lock now. One more lock to go. One more lock to go. It's Caversham Lock. And then we've got a few KA locks. Well, that boat's following us, I better speed up a bit. Um, yeah. Came through White Church Lock, well, we tried to. Um, came through Maple Durham Lock with another boat. They were nice. On a day boat, which is one behind us. Um, yeah, there was kids on the lock landing, farting about, so... Mountains. Oh, a hemlock growing there as well, isn't there? Yeah. we have seen growing in the, uh, by the lock. <laughs> by, by train. So you most poisonous plant in Britain, that. Uh, yeah. Work. So don't touch it. No, it can, you can confuse it with normal wild parsley and you can confuse it with cow parsley. Yeah. Don't go near it because you've got about two hours to live after that. You know, there's loads of it growing there. Josh was worried if one of the kids gets it in their mouth or on their fingers. I'm not worried. But yeah, the police were called because oh, yeah, the kids are on the lock. Oh yeah, the police were there, Yeah, the kids are on the lock land and they're not supposed to be on there. So luckily we weren't coming upstream. I had to land there with all those bloody little shafts. Can hardly get on my nerves. Anyway, we're heading into Reading now and uh, go for Caversham Lock next and then we'll be on the K and bloody A.
someone tell me what the hell a post box is doing inside of a railway embankment? The only thing I think of is they moved mail along the river back in the day and this would have been one of their post boxes. But I haven't seen any other examples. Well, you can tell we're getting close to Reading now, can't you?
and it's a tree mooring in Reading here and over the other side of that tree line is a big Tesco's. And here we go guys, it's the entrance of the K&A. You know that, because of this beautiful boat moored right in front. And it was there a year and a half ago, so that's pretty much the sign for it now. We just came through Cavish from Lock. There, it's in there, Dad, where that monstrosity of a boat is. <laughs> uh, yeah, through Cavish from Lock now, there's a boat coming down. Right? I'm turning, so I've got to come out. Yeah. Last in a minute. We're going into the... K&A now guys, we're starting a new journey on the K&A, 87 miles. Um, <laughs> we're glad to get off the Thames. I can't believe we made it though, it's only like 4 o'clock. You couldn't wait to get on it, now you can't wait yeah. to get off it again. 33 miles, I was excited for the upper Thames, not this lower Thames. It's too hectic for us. Uh, Thames and Kennet Marina is just down there, where we stayed three months in. Um, over winter because of the red boards, so check that video out. Yeah, well, you're not bad, you! And here's the Kent and Avon, there's no sign telling this side. It's from that side and it's covered up with bushes anyway. What is this thing? I don't know. <laughs> Just a random boat with like loads of stuff all over, guys. But yeah, we're going into the K&A now. Oh my god, I can't believe it. Attempt two. Can something stop us this time? If you remember last time, we couldn't go any further because the K&A was shut because the county's locked, which floods. But we're finally in the K&A. And the, the river was so powerful, mm. it pushed us into this bridge here. Yeah. Literally, we come round this corner. Why are we bouncing, and Dad? Olive got pushed back. Why what? are we bouncing? This part for some reason is technically owned by the EA so this is the last Thames lock and it's not electronic it's like one of the ones on the upper Thames and this is new territory to us guys because we never went through the lock because there was a sign that said the navigation was closed from High Bridge and High Bridge is only just up here so we didn't bother going through. And this is Highbridge, and what's most ironic about Highbridge is it's very low. And even in drought, we've only got about a foot to spare.
This is the infamous traffic light. You have to press this because the navigation through this next section is very narrow and very windy and it's not ideal for two boats to try and go through it at the same time. Oh, it's green, go! That was instant.
This is a very awkward setup here and it's extremely overgrown. You can't even tell where you're going at some points. And the trees are just leaning right over the canal. And to get to the lock landing, you've got to do like a really tight S bend. Come on! Ah! Oh, well... Here we are, at Journey's End, guys. A two day trip down the Thames to the KA. Can't believe it. Can't well, believe we did it in two days. Today we should be doing another 30 odd miles down the river way. But of course, changed our mind and we came on to the KA. Well, like most plans just changed, don't we? We had a great time, didn't we? Yeah, we flew down. We pushed Olive to her limits, didn't we? She couldn't go any faster. Yeah, but it's, it is good sometimes because a lot of these engines that you get in our boats. Especially this one, the Isuzu, is built for like trucks and lorries and vans, you know? That's what it was originally designed for and then it was marinized, but um, I don't like a lot of these engines going at low rev, so it's good now and again to give it a drash. And then it clears everything out, opens everything up, yeah. tests everything as well to the limit, so because all your belts are going really fast, everything's going really fast. So today, when we moor up, I'm going to check the engine, make sure everything's alright. Last time we spoke to you, we came into the uh, junction for the K&A, but there's still one more Thames lock you have to do, and funny enough, it's like the manual Thames lock further up uh, on the upper Thames. Mm. Goes back to wheels and stuff. Yeah, there's one guy there, the ex-lock keeper, he was talking to us about uh, the, the K&A and how difficult it is with some of the locks. He used to work at, for many years, worked at Teddington Lock. Oh. And then he moved somewhere else on the Thames. And then he, he's worked there for two or three years. And now he's retiring onto his own 62 foot narrow boot. Mm. So, so they're yeah. advertising the job down there in Reading. They want it. I don't know if you want that job. When Reading, you see all these lovely, yeah. ideal, idealistic lock keepers jobs on lovely canals. And even on the Thames, it looked, these cottages were lovely. but. The one at Reading looks a bit, wow, just mm. see it's in the middle of everything. So, a bit, yeah. Uh, I don't know. I can't say what it is through Reading, but it's not very nice. Right. In our opinions. Uh, but a lot of people's opinions, you know, it's, I don't know, it's it's weird. The, the layout's so weird, they just squished it, the river right down. So in the winter, it's impossible to get through. I mean, even the current in dr almost a drought. Yeah, it's really strong. Really strong current. Stronger yeah. than the Thames. Far stronger than the Thames. The Thames is very slow yeah. and quiet at the moment. But it's, it's very run down, it's very... There's graffiti everywhere, there's rubbish everywhere. The locks are in terrible condition. Um, and... Yeah, we've got, we got to Fobley Lock, but there's so much growth and vegetation. There's an S-Bend, it's like that. Oh no, it's like that, and then it's like that. And then, yeah, we hit the tree, then had to reverse back, and then we made it over there to where the lock was. But then, <laughs> we couldn't get over to the lock landing because the lock landing was completely yeah. over here. So, we were hitting the bridge and reversing back, and eventually we made it over to the lock landing. But the overflow weir is so powerful, it pushes the boat out. Um, 
and then I go up to the lock and then someone's left the top paddles up there's absolutely I can't say the word uh, stuff everywhere rubbish yeah. everywhere barbecues energy drink cans uh, towels knickers socks and uh, you can only guess who that who, who that belongs to can't you um, I know it is a quite a popular place for the kids there, so lucky we didn't come yesterday because I reckon they would have been up here hanging out. But they yeah, were seen here today. some kids on the Upper Thames that brought a big. There was about twenty or thirty of them, you know, that, at Kemscott that was swimming. Yeah. And they all came back up with all their rubbish in a bag and put it in the bin. Yet oh, these good. kids that down there, they didn't bother. No. It just left everywhere. It is horrible now. It's disgusting. Isn't yeah. It? But we just came through Fobley Lock and we moored up. Because we were absolutely exhausted. Because from me lock, it I don't know. It takes forever. I had to empty it. It's ferocious as well. <laughs> it really is. Yeah. I, we I tied Olive up. I've got a stream coming from the side, so Olive's trying to be pushed out. Then when Josh opened the lock gate, it was like Olive was like this at a forty-five degree angle. Mm. It was ferocious. So you got to be very careful with these locks on this canal. It started raining as well. So that but apparently it's a very beautiful canal. So I'm looking yeah. forward to getting further up. Yeah, it's nice the further you go, go along, no one really likes this end. So that's why today we're going to be cruising again. <laughs> only, yeah, not like 30 odd miles, only like, I don't know, 4 or 5 miles. There Just was, to get somewhere a bit nicer for yeah, the cats. There was a swing bridge that broke the other day because someone crashed their car into it. I mean, how rude is that? Oh, it was a car, I thought now. they crashed a boat into it. No, oh. the railing was completely like smashed. So that's been repaired, we can go through that today. Oh, I've got swing bridges, ugh, I hate swing bridges, especially road ones. This is a road one. So, yeah. Beep, okay. beep, beep, but, beep, beep. Yeah. But we've got to find somewhere nicer for the cats because here it, it's just it's ridiculous. You get bikes going, I don't know, I saw one yesterday, it was going about 40 miles an hour. Yeah, electric, there's electric bikes, electric mm. scooters along here, and the path's really nice. So. As soon as we let the cats out and they, they jump out, they, and then, yeah, they jump out or they like to sit on the path. Mm. There's, there's one, one there. there. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's just full of bikes and joggers really along here. So we're gonna go to a place that I we cycle. We we cycled this part. We cycled quite a lot of it. I remember it. But there's a part where it's in a field, just like the Thames, with no hedgerow, and it's wild mooring with oh, cows. Oh, I know. We, I remember that bit. Yeah, so we're going to go there today and hopefully find a moor in there. It's really muddy, wasn't it? And a wild moor. At oh, the time. Oh, yeah, yeah, there. Yeah. yeah. Couldn't get our bikes through, could we? No, yeah. Yeah, so we're going to go and do another five miles or something. But that's going to be another video, so we'll see you then. See you later.